What's up, my New World friends? Today, I want to make a guide for mostly newer players for all the different mining routes I've done in some of my other videos. I'll do Iron Ore, Star Metal Ore, and Ore Calcum Ore. Mithril Ore, I'll do for another video because it's pretty much worthless. You might as well just let the bots do that and buy it off of the training post. So let's get started. One of the best and most easily accessible areas is just right out of the Everfall Settlement. You can either run up to Faith's Bounty where you'll find some wordwood trees, Iron Ore, uh, tons of the wolves for Rawhide, as well as some... Um, silver so you'll find that there and then or you can run a little bit south to that area i'm circling and there's just iron or pretty much just popped up everywhere it's also some life blooms and then as always you should always kill the rabbits i know it sounds cruel but some choice rabbits still sell for 30 or 40 gold a lot of times so you can pop those out so basically just run around this area and you'll find there's like 15 to 16 iron ore nodes as well as the other stuff i mentioned before so we'll go quickly through these we'll move to the next spot all right, for spot two, we're going to head to Weaver's Fen. We're going to go down to the bottom of the map there, to the Dunkelberg Shrine. They had moved it from where it was previously. And then there's a set of ledges there on the mountains that you can basically just run around. It looks like a horseshoe there upside down. You're going to find there's probably 15 to 20 iron ore nodes along the route. Uh, usually there's nobody up here because uh, you got to fall down a lot to get some of the stuff. There's also hemp along the route, so you'll get some other resources as well. But you can do this, and you can probably get three, 4,000 iron ore per hour. So, all right, move on to spot number three. For spot number three, we're going to head down into Windsward now. So where we get to the settlement, we're going to head up here to the Noble Reach Shrine. And then basically all around this area on these mountains, there are iron ore nodes. So first, always run over here to the left and get those nodes. There's four or five, and then there's a lot of bunnies too, so kill those for that sumptuous rabbit meat. For some reason, everyone I killed in this video, I didn't get anything, but I was using mining gear and mining luck food, which really isn't useful for anything lower than probably star metal, because then that's when you really start to get the better jewels and such. So actually, when you're doing some iron ore, I would probably recommend if you're going to do some other things at the same time, like uh, any skinning or anything like that, to use the appropriate food for that instead, because really no need to try to get luck on the iron ore nodes. They really don't drop anything with luck, so... Just run around this area, you get three to 4,000 hour, plus uh, there's lots of creatures to kill for different uh, leather making goods as well. The first spot, number four, this is probably my favorite spot. Um, we're going to head into Ebonscale Reach. Actually, to get there, you go to the Wikala Walla outpost at the very bottom there of Brimstone Sands, and then you'll drop down a ledge. What's cool about this is after you get down here, there's really no mobs to battle or anything like that. So there's some of these prism blooms that you can get for some of the die making stuff. There's 15 or 16 iron ore nodes. There's also a couple of ironwood trees. There's some fiber in one corner. And then also we have wire fiber and then like the ironwood trees I said as well. So this is a nice area if you're a little bit higher level for the for your crafting at least. So your logging skill and your harvesting skill, etc. Um, like I said, really no mobs in the way. You can even come down here and fish if you want to. It's got a pretty nice view especially during the daytime. It's nighttime now, so, and for some reason I'm recording on 1080p to make it quicker. It seems like it makes it a little better. But like I said, just run loops down here. You'll see, you see these wire fibers and then the iron ore. And as always, that was going to be my top seven spots and gathering locations for star metal ore. A lot of these locations will also have things such as Azoth water, uh, runewood trees, ironwood trees, etc. So you can get other resources at the same time to increase your profit. Okay, for spot number one, we're going to be heading to the Shattered Mountains. We're going to head north of the Mountain Rise outpost. Basically, we're just going to be running this ledge route here on this ledge and then to the bottom where there's some angry earth mobs. We're going to find 24 nodes or so, so you can get two to 3,000 star metal per hour pretty easily. Also, we're going to find rudewood trees. There's a couple of ironwood trees and Azoth water. As always, you should uh, wear your luck gear, eat your luck food. So for mining, that's tier five foods, the crispy potatoes and chicken and then we're gonna also use proficiency booster and we'll just get at it so some of these star metals then will give you some jewels so you'll get extra and as always you should have a tool that has some sort of a moat alignment so you can increase your profit yield by getting those moats so basically just run along these ledges here all the way down to the bottom like i said there's 24 nodes so two to three thousand an hour pretty easily not always not very many people here usually so it's a good spot so now we'll move on to spot number two Okay, for spot number two, we're going to head to Great Cleave, and it's going to be the Bastion Outpost. We're going to run along the ledge from north to south and then back again. This is a little bit higher level spot, so if you're new, you might want to skip this one. It's basically the road to the Mangled Heights, so some of the mobs are a little higher level. And uh, if you're not geared fairly well, 
you might have some trouble with those. So like I said, just maybe if you're newer, just skip this one. But if you're an experienced player, it's pretty easy. Just run along the ledge. There's 24 nodes here as well. So another two to 3,000 star metal per hour. There's really no other resources here. A couple chests up on there if you want to kill the mobs. But that's about it. So we'll skip on to spot number three. Okay, for spot number three, we're going to head to the capital of Brightwood. And we're going to go up by the cemetery and on the way to Greyvale where the bears are. And you're going to find around 27 nodes on the ledges. And that'll net you about 3,000 per hour. As well as those nodes you have the wordwood trees so a little bit of extra gold there and there's uh one treasure chest and then of course you can also kill the bears for the thick eyed so overall this is a fairly good route if you have some of your other resources skills up like your logging scanning etc so you can really double your profit by just running around getting the nodes and then getting those wordwood trees and then killing the bears for tons and tons of the hides for your leather working so easy spot for pretty much anyone new player casual like and now we'll head on to spot number four Okay, on to spot number four. This is my favorite spot if it's not very busy, so especially late at night or super early in the morning because I'm on the east coast of the United States. So early in the morning and late at night is pretty good. But basically, you're going to go to Ebenscale Reach. You're going to hit the Imperial Shrine, fast travel point, and then the circle that I'm making on the map there, you're just going to run that continuously, and there are tons and tons of nodes. So I think there's like around 30 star metal nodes, and then you've got uh, several chests and the waterfalls. Then there's some of the elemental creatures around. There's four or five of those on the route. And then there's also nine or ten or a calcum ore nodes. So this is a great, great spot. And definitely here I would use your proficiency boosters and wear your mining luck gear. Even if there's somebody else around, uh, you can usually still do pretty well. You can just run the opposite direction. But some of these uh, rocky outcroppings, there's a couple of star metal ores that you won't see in the rock. But if you get close to the rock, you'll um, actually target them. So there's two or three like that. And then on cross on the ledges there, there's just a couple mobs, but they're pretty easy to kill. So, especially now that we have the level cap increase. So, all right, we're going to head on to spot number five. Spot number five is another fan favorite. Basically, you head to the Haunted Isle at the very southern area of Cutlass Keys. And on the ledge by Pond Scum Fort, there are around 15 nodes of star metal. Um, usually, in, late at night, this is not busy at all. I had another video called Star Metal Secret that shows how to get up here and stuff. Basically, you just run up a ledge at the far uh, western side, and then you make your way to the east. Or you can do it the opposite direction, but it's trickier to get up on the east side. Once you're done with these 15 nodes, you'll get around 1,500 to 2,000 star metal ore per hour. But the real good thing about this is you can just jump down to the right here, and you can get tons and tons of hides from the gators and the cats and then also there's tons of herbs and being cutlass keys you have the expensive herbs here so that's nice and you'll get your hyssop and there's also fiber and silk so it's a very good place for gathering and getting tons and tons of gold from that spot number six is another fantastic route it's in weaver's fen basically go to the settlement and the trestle shrine and you can go back and forth between them run the south vega bridge here this will probably net you the most star metal if there's no one around sometimes there used to be bots here every once in a while but i don't think there's as many bots as there used to be in the game but i could be wrong let me know in the comments if you've noticed a change in that or not basically you can go down to the threshold shrine and then you can run all the way to the north along the bridge right at the shrine there there's three or four iron or uh, star metal nodes sorry wrong wrong video but basically, you can get all that. So there's 31 nodes total. You can get around 4,000 per hour very easily. Uh, there's also a couple aura calcum nodes off to the left and down to the bottom there. There's some wire fiber nodes. So like I said, just run from the trestle shrine along the bridge route, uh, circling around the bridge, and you can get around 31 nodes there if no one's around, and around three to 4,000 star metal per hour. So now on to spot seven. Okay, for spot seven, we're going to head back to Brightwood. And we're going to go to the Wolf's Egg Shrine. It's on the border of Brightwood and Ebenscale Reach. And basically on these ledges here and then up to where this uh, church building type is, you're going to run these ledges. And there are 21 or 22 star metal nodes. And there's also a couple elemental creatures you can get. And then uh, there's a few wordwood trees off to the right. And then I believe if you drop down, there's some lodestone, but it's not really worth dropping down unless there's somebody else there and you're competing with. So like right now, there's somebody else running through. So I'm just getting a few of these nodes to make the video and then I'll let them get the rest. But you can do that. You just run these cliffs. And as you can see with using your mining gear, you're going to get a lot of the azurite trunks and you'll get some jewels and stuff too, which is nice. So you can use those to level your jewel crafting and stone cutting skills. 
or to use to make stardust. So you can use that or gym dust, sorry, not stardust. Stardust will be cool, but gym dust whenever you're doing PVP to nullify and absorb some of the elemental damage that you will take. So just run along these ledges here, 21 nodes, a uh, couple thousand star metal per hour, so make you a little bit of money. It's fairly low level friendly because um, there aren't any mobs at all on these ledges. And just make sure you jump across this little ravine here because the ledge up here on the very border with Ebon Scale Reach has three or four nodes as well. So then there's also some nuts and berries and stuff if you want to grab those for cooking. We're going to be doing Aura Calcum routes today. So with our first route, we'll get started. All right, for spot number one, we're going to head over to Eden Grove and we can either go to the Genesis Shrine or the Shrine on the border there with uh, Great Cleave. We're going to come in and we're going to head over to where the Blighted Rise is. And basically we're going to run along the edge of the mountain and it's a pretty busy spot, but there are tons and tons of nodes there. So I'll show you here in just a sec. This spot has 19 to 20 nodes and it's pretty busy because it's really easy to get to and there's no mobs at all to bother you. Um, if you go off to the left there a little bit up in the marshes, there's a treasure chest and some of the elemental, basically the rocks there. So you can just long, run along this ledge and there's 19 or 20 nodes. And if there's nobody around, it's a really good spot to farm. So we'll move on to spot number two. All right, let's get cracked into spot number two. So now we're going to head to the uh, Merc Guard fast travel point in the Shattered Mountains and we're going to drop down in the ravine. And basically down here there's 20 nodes that you can just run through where Pit Lord Dehi is. So you can also farm that guy for the Corrupted Totem for the Major Corrupted Trophy. Uh, the mobs aren't here aren't too bad, but there are a lot of them. Some of them respawn pretty quick, but you're going to first drop down, you're going to kill the Tendril and these other mobs. And there's three nodes here. And as you go up farther, there's two nodes. And then there are two areas that have Tendrils around them. They're like, a, it looks like a little pit that comes out of the ground, like with spikes. And there'll be a couple nodes around there. And then a little bit farther off to the right, there's some more nodes. So just run through there. There's also some treasure chests. And like I said, You'll come up to Pit Lord Dehi and you can fight him for some legendary gear that you can salvage into Dark Matter, as well as the uh, Corrupted Major Trophy crafting item, the Corrupted Totem. For spot three, we head to another fairly easy popular spot. You'll recognize this from my Star Metal Guide. It's the Imperial Shrine Fast Travel Point, and basically you're going to run around circles around the mountains there, around the ocean. And it's the same as that for the star metal. So if you watch that video, you'll notice, but mainly on the left-hand side is where the aura calcum is. So there's like eight or nine nodes there, a couple on the east side, along with 20 or 30 star metal ores. So there are also some elemental creatures around, so you can make good, good gold from this. Uh, for spot four, you essentially just head into Brimstone Sands, and then you're going to go over here to the settlement on the left-hand side. And then these uh, Castum, Trigometis, and Vindictus, and then a little farther down, there's a... Uh, few ores in each of these not a lot so you can go over there and hit those and then also you can glob farm at the same time so you can get the ectoplasmic globs and those sell for good gold so really quick overview of that spot as there's not much to say you just go in this i'm gonna say now that spot five if there's no one around is definitely the best spot there's like 20 nodes uh they're all along the cliff here so you go to sirens run fast travel point in reek water head south to the climb and you hit up on the mountain there um i already went through once and then, then somebody else came through so i'll just ride my horse through but you can see all these nodes just run along the edge of the cliff be careful um if you do it on a horse, you gotta be really careful because you can fall off and then you have to come back around. But if you just jump off, you can stay pretty well. See right there is three nodes, down here is another two. And then when you get to the very bottom here, you can run over to the right and you see that big mountain that's popping out. You can go over there and there's some lodestone around the base of that. There's like three nodes. So like you see on the horse there, I fell off. But see the lodestone over there so you can get that. Then also out in the water, there's a uh, Azoth Spring and then up on the the climb itself there there are some treasure chests and mobs to kill so thanks very much for watching i made this video pretty short today i'm hoping it helps if it does please consider liking and subscribing joining the channel appreciate it very much and i'll see you in the next video which will be uh, mithril or farming routes